So what are two ways to do IMRT optimizations? Briefly describe each method. How does the method involving iterative solutions work? Write the equation and describe the variables. How is simulated annealing used? And how does this compare to VMAT optimization? So let's talk about IMRT optimizations. They can be directly analytical or stochastic, meaning essentially iterative. So, so stochastic and iterative are the same. So briefly describe each one. So the analytical method is a inverse of CT reconstruction, essentially. So by using the dose is equal to the fluence convolved with the kernel, we can use the Fourier space to take an inverse Fourier transform of that equation, which will give us ultimately fluence. But we can also get negative or imaginary fluences, which obviously will lead to undeliverable plans. So typically we use the stochastic or iterative method. So let's talk about the iterative method. So don't know too much about the analytical method. It's a lot of math and because you're using that math, ultimately you are going to get negative fluences or imaginary fluences, things that obviously we're not able to actually treat. So now the iterative, this uses a cost function, which ultimately we want to minimize. If you minimize a cost function, that means you are meeting your goals and your coverage goals while also reducing to the maximum the effects and the dose to the surrounding tissues. So if your cost function is low, that means you're achieving your goal with the minimum sacrifice. If it's high, it means you may be meeting your coverage, but you are it's costing you a lot. And there's going to be a lot of dose into the other surrounding tissues. So this looks at the difference of the desired dose and what can actually be achieved. The larger the difference, the harder it's going to push. So let's write the equation in the variables. I went ahead and wrote this down, but I don't think honestly you would need to have to write this. They may provide it to you like I did here and you may have to describe the variables, but I would be surprised if they ask you from just memorization to write this. But let's break it down. So C is the least square cost function for the end here just means, means the nth iteration. And specifically, there's a cost function for every organ. So I right here is that is essentially the organ in question. So the nth iteration and the organ I. The D0 is the desired dose in structure I. N, the capital N is the number of dose points. Uh, the DN is the computed dose at that same point. And then W is the weight factor in structure I. So all these variables go into determining the overall cost function. And what ultimately happens is the algorithm adjusts this DN value. So remember, this is the computed dose. So it adjusts the computed dose values to minimize the overall cost function, which is the sum of costs from the target volumes and the OARs. So ultimately, you want the overall cost function, which is the sum of all the cost functions of all the structures and all the organs to be as small as possible. So let's, we did this, how simulated annealing use. So Iterative techniques contain local minima. So what we got is, let's just look and say this is a, a typical optimization curve. So in, in ARIA or Eclipse, you go into optimization, you are going to see the system kind of work. It's in the bottom right and there's a graph. And when you adjust your OARs and your priorities and your doses, you're going to see it work. So there are things called local minimums, like right here. That is a local minus, minima. So the system is working and say this is cost function. And it's like, okay, cost function is increasing. I'm getting worse. I'm getting worse. Oh, I found a solution. The cost function is going down. Okay, I'm doing well. And it finds this little, this little well right here. So a local minima, that's what that is. 
And what we don't want to happen is the system to be like, oh, the cost function's going down. Okay, right here, I found the best solution. Because if it keeps working, it's going to find that, okay, it may go up for a little bit, but then it's going to drop down again. Then, okay, maybe it'll go up a little bit, then it's going to drop down again. So that is ultimately what we want to do is to find the global minima. And we're going to use simulated annealing to do that. So we accept these computed values, the DN values that give a negative cost function, meaning that any changes the algorithm makes with this DN value that reduces the cost function, it's going to accept. Obviously, that is a good change and your cost function is reducing. However, if the cost function is positive, we can use an acceptance criteria probability and that allows us to get out of these local minima. So that's saying that I adjusted this and yeah, cost function went up, but there is a acceptance criteria that if it goes up, I can still make that change given the fact that it may help me get an overall lower cost function. So that's what simulated annealing is. That's what thermal, the thermal energy is used for. That probability that I was just talking about is E to the negative CN over KTN, where KT is the thermal energy for each iteration N. So early iterations have a very high acceptance probability because it's learning, okay, what changes can I make in this DN value? What MLC structures can I create? And so it has a very high probability because it's like, yeah, let's try a bunch of things out and see what we can do. But as you get later on into the optimization, this is time, uh, say seconds, this probably would be minutes. But when you get later on, it's already found a pretty good cost function. It's already pretty low. So in order for it to get temporarily worse, it's got to think, okay, there needs to be a benefit at the end of this risk. So how does this compare to VMAP optimization? So in VMAP, each arc is represented by control points, and that's made via the gantry angles, the MLC leaf parameters, and the MU weight. These are evenly distributed, and ultimately there are five levels. They all use the number, same number of control points. So it is different than this IMRT iterative approach, but... Typically, uh, this IMRT is what certainly I would know, dabble in VMAT a little bit. But if you have questions, please comment below. A fun topic to research and really understand how these work. It's very intriguing, but definitely know this for your exam and just let me know if you have questions. Happy studying.